Expanding our knowledge through those amongst us is a privilege we take for granted. Join me as we explore the minds of our fellow beings to unlock their knowledge for ourselves. Greetings, fellow travelers and storytellers. Welcome to the Arthadian Anthologies podcast, where I, MS Arthadian, dive into the ever-expanding universe I'm developing and the deeper meaning behind it all. Today is something a little different. Glass is a behavioral therapist and marketing consultant who I have had the privilege to work alongside. For this episode, we chatted about him and his work, going into concepts that I don't normally talk about here in the anthology. So sit back relax, and listen to this potentially insightful conversation the two of us shared. Enjoy. Hello. Today we have something unique, special, that is completely different than anything I've actually done. We're going to go over social media marketing and mental illness and possibly tie in storytelling into all of that. But today's guest is... A colleague of mine, a coworker of mine, Irvi or Glass. Nice to thank you for having me on. Nice to meet you guys, uh, including your cat. Yes, my cat is right here. Hi, Maui. She she wants to come say hi hi to me. She always likes to like walk up and try to get me to pet her. But yeah, I love it. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. So, um. I guess I can start by my fascination with mental health, mm-hmm. um, um, the mind. I think uh, it's something incredibly, incredibly just under underappreciated in the sense that we don't have enough resources to study it. Yeah. At the same time, it's so complex. Yeah, it is. Uh, and so even with the resources we have, it's just, it's never enough. Mm-hmm. You can unravel it you know, consistently over and over again. But um, at the same time, it, it's always called my, my attention because it, it it was something that always, I always felt like I could kind of tell or tell what people were feeling mm-hmm. uh, just by looking at them ever since, you know. A like young a form age. of empathy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever, yeah. I, it's something that I have a really early memory of mm-hmm. from when I was a kid, maybe six, seven years old, I could just see someone and read their body language or yeah. see how stressed they were. Or maybe, you know, without them telling me something, I could, you know, it, when I was a kid, I, I couldn't really do much. All I would do was, you know, maybe bring my mom a cup of water or, or, or try and get something, you know, like a candy or give it to my friends and stuff like that. And yeah. I would try and, and, and figure out how I can make them feel better. And at the same time, maybe even find out what the problem was so I could help them with it. And that was something I didn't realize till later. That's not really how seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds kind of perceive. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it, it's a different feeling altogether. Like, and and also like when you're that age, you're not really like paying attention to all of the nuances of of the social interactions that you have with people. Um, but there's a, there's a type of maturity that goes that goes along with being able to empathize with with others and yes. all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, very true, very true. And it's just, um, as I grew up, I kind of realized it, that, you know, I felt more inclined to helping people, Mm -hmm. more inclined to to being there for people that that had a need. Mm -hmm. Um, And then as I also grew up more, and then I realized that the thing that people more struggled with was actually health issues, mental health issues, to be more exact. So that's why it was at times hard to help people because they didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. You know, it was something that was completely inside of them and they didn't understand it. And especially, you know, during that time as they're, you know, they, a lot of them were my age or, you know, they had troubled families and things like that. So, um, as I grew up, I started to learn that. So I started to think, huh, I wonder if I learned more about mental health and mental health issues and maybe I could help people more. You know, so it was always more, it was, it's always been about helping people. That's yeah. kind of something that's always been, you know, part of me. Yeah. And, and you, you also work at, like you worked as a, as a consultant and all that stuff or 
Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for for quite a few years, I worked as a behavioral therapist. Mm-hmm. I was able to um, to find an agency that that hired me with no experience, entry level, is what they call it, and um, and uh, usually they ask for either education or some experience or yeah. experience with kids and things like that. And I had some experience working with kids and teens, working in the boys and girls club. Yeah, and so. Um, with that experience alone, they kind of like took me in and they trained me and I got certified and things like that. That's really cool. And I felt that it was just, it was, just, I felt like when I started to work in it almost immediately, I was like, this is, this is what I was, this is for me. Like, this is what I was looking for. Like everything just made sense. Yeah. And every problem that was presented to me, I was able to, you know, get really get a deep dive, look into it and able to help the family. It's like a passion in, in help and seeing other people uh, kind of grow yes. and and build from from where they once were, where where they were in a a downward spiral, and you yeah. could you could help lift people out of that. Yes, yes, very very true. And it's just it was it was interesting to see because I always knew uh, mental health and and psychology and neuroscience. I loved looking up stuff about yeah, the neuro, brain neuroscience and, yeah, and all that stuff. It was just something that always fascinated me yeah. since I was younger. So I always knew it was something interesting to me, but not until I worked in the field is when I realized that, wow, this is actually what I'm like. This is me. Mm-hmm. This, this isn't just a form of, this is just something that I'm interested. This is me. Like this is what I'm in. This is what I need to do to help people. But uh, as I started to, to see, it was just, at times it felt very overwhelming. Yeah. And I'm sure, I don't know if there are any listeners that have worked in the field or know people that work in the field. They know that there's never enough therapists. There's That's true. O- there's yeah. always so much overwhelming amount of work. And mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever been at a at a at um, at an agency that has ever, you know, not said that they have so much work or, or that, they're, that the supervisors have to take, they always have to take work home oh. and work over hours because yeah. it's just not enough time. And, and that really burns a lot of people out, mm-hmm. but, um, then you can see the need and, and, and helping people, you know, as a group. So that's kind of how I got into more, um, into social media marketing, because mm-hmm. what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring to light the mental health yeah. and also, uh, the opportunities and also the programs that were available to more people. Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of the things that I noticed was that there were a lot of people that, uh, needed the help, but they didn't know how to get the help. They didn't know who to talk to. Yeah. Or maybe they were embarrassed. They were ashamed. They had fear. So they didn't really know what to do. I'm talking about like the parents of the kids and the teenagers that we were, we would help. Mm. Uh, sometimes, I mean, if uh, you, you had like a, you know, a child that had autism or, or, or uh, down syndrome, obviously the government usually just gives you these programs and you're kind of just enrolled and you can get yeah. into it. Yeah. Um, but if it's more like anxiety and depersonalization disorders and, yeah. you know, um, it, you 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 have a problem socializing with people. That's kind of where you're like, well, should I get help? I mean, I'm not crazy, you know. But that's kind of how people connect mental health. Mm. They they think, oh, uh, then I mean, I'm not crazy, so I don't have a mental. But it's not about being crazy, you know. That's yeah, not like, when you need the help. So, sometimes, if like for people who have like bad anxiety, they they'll they seem fine mm-hmm. until until something triggers them, and then it causes like them to start hyperventilating and then all this stuff starts going down and and it's not even sometimes the event that triggers them doesn't seem that bad to to people who don't go through that that experience but Mm -hmm. for them it's it's like ptsd it's like it's like you see something and then it causes you to like have a flashback of of that one thing and it can happen to anyone and based off of any kind of event yeah, that's yeah. true. And I think that's that's one of the reasons why it's kind of hard to have people seek help or mm-hmm. have people understand that there are people that need to seek help uh, because it can happen to everyone. Yeah. And, and, and it happens to a lot of people that they feel they feel, you know, that they're that they're anxious or, or they feel that they have bad a bad day. A lot of people just call, it, you know, I just had a bad day and yeah. things like that. And that's true. Some people just do have bad days and then they're over it and that's it. But other people, it goes more than that. And they don't understand that there's some people that just can't get over it, and because it's not something you can just get get over. It's a it's an actual health. It's actually a health issue, mm-hmm. and so um, that's why, especially like specifically, hi, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, saying hi to the cat. Hi, uh, specifically with um, with anxiety because there's so many other topics, right? But it's specifically with anxiety. Yeah. It's just once people realize that it's act- they're they're going through a problem, 
there's so many other issues that come up. It's like, well, I'm just weak. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm just not strong enough to be able to get through this. How come my mom or my dad or my uncle were, was able to do it and I can't, you know, and they start yeah. to go through that, to those uh, issues, which is causes even more problems uh, because then they think they're just, you know, they're just not, not, not strong enough to be able to get through it when it's not that mm-hmm. it's a health issue. Yeah. Yeah. So with mental illness, with COVID and all that stuff, it's been on on the rise because everyone's been locked down for about almost two years now. Yeah, almost. and and I know that suicides have been on the rise as well. Yes. Uh, do you think that there are there is there are ways that people can kind of skirt around that or like remedies that could help people in this time that we're that we're going through right now? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do it's just i feel like even the 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 normal things that you can do like maybe get uh seek therapy or maybe uh seek medication people don't do that Mm -hmm. so even even they they go to they go to the the uh supermarket to get some alcohol and then that's their (laughs) exactly what a lot of people do is that they tend to find what what is like an emotional band-aid you know they they try to cover it up Mm-hmm. Uh, with things that they like. So they don't see anything wrong with it because it's something that they like and they enjoy. It's like and a form of escapism. Ex- exactly, yeah. exactly. It's exactly sca- sca- escapism. And it can be stuff like alcohol or drugs and things like that. And uh, so that's, that'll definitely bring up a red a red flag. But mm-hmm. sometimes it's not. It can be something else even more. It can be, like in my case, it'll, it'll be like Pokemon cards or it'll be, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it'll be like, uh, you know, collecting pops or yeah. to something else that I do. But then if you take it to an extreme where, you know, you're not taking care of yourself and you could be using the money to be able to seek help instead. Yeah. That's kind of like uh, where you kind of, it, it's harder to see those red flags, mm-hmm. but in reality, the help is there. Um, I mean, there's a ton of other alternatives you could, you could do, but I mean, it's better to kind of start with the, with the foundational things to so start with mm-hmm. the things that are, that are there that can help you the most that have more of a, of a, of a, a track track record that, that work. And so stuff like, um, like, like I mentioned therapy, mm-hmm. uh, or if, if it needs to go to medication or if you want to look alternatives to medication, uh, but doing nothing or, you know, just succumbing to something else just to hide it yeah to, for, to forget about it that's that's the thing that you you don't want and and that doesn't just go for the person that's feeling it that goes for the for the family members that are seeing it yeah the, you need a good support network and and being able to see the those things happening and also communicate that to the person that like oh th- they can tell that there's there's things that are, that are going on with them um but also it is about it is the person's choice who whoever is going through it like they they yes. need to seek the help out yes. they need to be willing to open themselves up even if they're going through some kind of rough patch where they're vulnerable and they and and they don't want to be vulnerable anymore they want to close up and like you know get all the layers of the onion back on to them so that they yeah. don't peel them off again yeah. yeah and it makes it hard for them to trust people but you know, just having that support network helps a lot. Yeah, and 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 it's interesting because the support network network can also um, seek the help as well. Yeah. So a, a lot of people think, oh, therapy is only for someone that's sick. Mm-hmm. So that therapy is only for someone that 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 needs that that has like schizophrenia or anything like that. But in reality, therapy can be for the family members of the person that needs the help. Because how are you? It, it's understandable. A lot of people go. When you tell them, well, you need to be able to support them, you need to be able to help them, and they're like, I don't know how. Like, I was never taught. My parents never, you know, when they raised me, uh, I, they never taught me how to talk to my to my kids. You know, they they, yeah, they yeah. the opposite way, or you know, something like that's a very generic way of, way of thinking it. But it's a very um, it's something that you hear very very often that they just don't know what to do. So what do you have to do? So then you go talk to a therapist. It's not because you. You, you need the therapy or who knows, maybe you'll find out you do, but it, it's not about that you need the therapy, but you need to know how to talk to them and what subjects to talk to them yeah. about and, and how to touch these, these things without, um, you know, making it worse. Yeah. And, and also I feel like those people, like the support network who, who's around that person, they might actually be going through, through some me- mental issues too, because they, they're getting, they're getting depressed because that person is depressed and they care about that. Like they have like a, 
huge amount of empathy for that person yep. and it causes them to feel depressed and, and they, they need to talk through that as well. Exactly. And, and then what happens is it'll happen like a little cycle. They'll get anxious and they'll get depressed because of this other family member that or the friend that's going through this. And then they end up like lashing out to them because because they are also depressed or, or they feel that that anger. And then it'll just it'll just perpetuate this this cycle that that you 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 see. And it's very, very common to see in in, in families, you know, very mm-hmm. common to see in or in friends. You know, if you think, you know, the if you don't know that they're going through something, then what do you do? You just like very big that was very big a couple of years ago or maybe even this year the cancel culture you know what I'm yeah just not, i'm just not yeah. going to talk to them because they're this way but what if you yeah. know they actually needed the help you yeah, know? That, that that's kind of what that that's kind of what happened with me uh a year ago i i had a, a falling out with some family members um it's gotten better now though uh because i've i've kind of reached out to them at times when they would talk about politics and 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 stuff mm-hmm. and then i would have to kind of give my opinion without giving my full opinion mm-hmm. and that caused it, it causes tension between between the two and like i don't i don't want to be divided based off of politics i i, I they, they can do all that stuff like they can believe what they want to believe mm-hmm. um it's just once they start once people start to kind of push on to others that their their whole agenda then it's like that's where you, you kind of, I kind of draw the line. It's like, it's like if, if someone's super religious are like, are you going to allow them to kind of like make you into, into this same religion or are you going to just kind of listen to them and then go about your day or, or try to try to see it from their perspective, I guess, yeah. see, see it from, yeah. from their perspective, but, but don't allow it to, just be like, oh, this is dogmatic thought, and it causes like people to just get divided because they they don't agree with with certain things. And I, I just want, I, I just think that people need to, fi- people need need to really think about all the things that they believe in, mm-hmm. and and kind of double double check and like and triple check and like look at themselves in the mirror, kind of think about like like how how they how they view the world, how they, how they view society and how they view themselves. Because in reality, like I think that society as a whole is just, it's kind of, we, we are a part of that society. So we need to, we need to look at ourselves, look within ourselves, Mm -hmm. find all the flaws and kind of bring them out and show and shine light onto them. And then basically be like, okay, okay, this is, these are, these are things I have, I have a problem with. And I need to fix them. Yes. And it's like everyone needs to go through this. It's like it's like when you when you have a bad relationship and you end up breaking up, and then you go and rebound like right right off the bat. It, but in reality, that bad relationship might have not, not been just the your your uh, your significant other's fault. Mm-hmm. It would it was also your fault partly. And if you're not if you're not aware of that, then you're never going to fix the problems and you're always going to have the same problems in every single relationship. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. And and I feel it's hard for people to, to, to get to that stage where they, that have, they have that self-awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people are very afraid, especially because once you're self-aware, a lot of people realize that, or they can realize that they can't do it alone, mm-hmm. which is something that, you know, we, we, sh- we shouldn't really do it alone. We, no, we, we, we have the help. We have the support either if it's yeah. professional or maybe even some friends or maybe some family members, everybody's circumstances are different. So, um, but everybody can seek that support. Yeah. But a lot of people don't look for the help or don't reach out because they, it, it's either one of two things. Uh, uh, it's either because they're, they're afraid or or they they um they have fear or they have uh oh man I'm completely like on this e- egotistic thing. like they're they're yeah, it's uh yeah they have shame shame it's okay. either fear or shame yeah. and and I'm gonna see how I'm gonna connect it to that is exact point because a lot of people think well you know I'm gonna give one example this isn't mine mm-hmm. but an example that I've heard in the past it's like oh well my 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 dad doesn't seek help he thinks he can do it all on his own and it's because of his pride. It's yeah. because he has a big ego. Yeah. And because of that, they will hold like a grudge against him because they think it's because of that. But once you dissect it and you go down to the very, very foundations of those feelings, like maybe, okay, 
let's think about it. If if if, if this person doesn't want to doesn't want to accept any help, uh, it's do you think it's because of their ego? Okay, why do they think that? Is it because they think that it's a weakness? Most possibly, they think it's a weakness needing needing to get help. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? That means at in a time in their life. Either it was their family member, it was their parents, or even themselves being in a sick situation where they couldn't get any help. Mm. They they needed to be strong. Yeah. Either, yeah. either they need they needed to be strong at a very young age because they couldn't have that support anywhere. Yeah. Or or their their parents, you know, forced that on them that they needed to be strong and, and showing any 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 kind of uh, of needing for help is was a weakness and they kind of was they were formed to think that Mm -hmm. so now when they think of needing help they think of it as a weakness so Mm -hmm. now when they when they if they feel like they need they need help then they they think back and they're like whoa that's that's shameful like how i i can't be that weak i need to be strong because that's how they were formed so now how that's how it goes into into feeling shame so now when you think about it you're like well it's not that they're that they're that they're completely just egocentric or they're thinking that they that that they they have a lot of pride. Now think about it this way: he doesn't look for help because he uh, um, is shameful of it. Now, when you think about it that way, it, it kind of gives you a little more of a of an empathetic point of view. Like mm-hmm. think, think you 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 see them and they you kind of try and feel what they feel and they yeah. think, oh, well, they're gonna feel shame if they if they like wow like now now your objective isn't to try and pry them out of being prideful. It's trying to show them that it's not. It's not a bad thing. It's, it, yeah, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, or or it can go the other way where they they'll feel fear, you know, and and they if they show any sign of weakness as well, then uh, they're going to be afraid because then they won't be able to protect themselves or they won't be able to protect their loved ones. So they don't need any help; but they can do it themselves. Mm-hmm. So when you see it those kind of ways, it kind of t- changes the the way you view people when yeah. you go down to the foundation of of why people feel things in reality. Wow, very insightful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the research, the data. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so with us living in this COVID era mm-hmm. and social media, perhaps even media uh, in general, just sending us into a major divide in, in our society, like not just the U.S., but but also in other countries as well. And like there's a bunch of like, you know, news that, are, that is coming out that, that also causes a, l- a lot of depression for people. Like I, I know one of the things that uh, some friends of mine have, have talked about is Afghanistan mm-hmm. and that whole situation that causes people to be like to like, see the world and become like woeful. And there's no there's no it's, it, it, like the hope is kind of gone, like has kind of been just taken out of the world. Uh, but what are your thoughts on the impact on mental health that like social media and this whole basically like the, the, the past five, five or five to 10 years, I guess uh, social media like kind of be, became a thing mm-hmm. and yeah. like Facebook and yeah. t- Twitter and all that stuff. Um, what are your thoughts on its impact on social, on, on mental health? And also do you think that there could be, like alter, better better alternatives to social media and maybe like ways that we can improve the technology to help make help make people see the issues of, of what what is going on um being addicted to to social media yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean i i just was driving driving by a high school or earlier and literally like all the all of them were on their phones just yeah. just constantly and yeah I mean, I'm on my phone all the time. It's it's become basically we are, we are in, in a way. This is how Elon Musk, I think, uh, said it was that we're like cyborgs already because, I, I think it was Elon Musk, but but basically the the phone is a an extension like an of ourselves. Yeah, 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 and I think he, it was him. Yeah, yeah, and because he's talking about the neural link and how how once we get into into our brain, we already have the phone here, yeah. but once we get into our brain, we won't have to look at the phone all the time. Yeah, but. Yeah, there's a lot of other stuff we go into that, oh, yeah, but <laughs> but for now, I think I think social media, how social media has affected mental illness, and and do you think that there there could be better alternatives in the future? That's a really, really big question. Yes, yeah, and it's it's something that we could talk about for hours and hours in reality because, um, in my in my perspective and the things that I've seen and the things the data that I've that I've read and also um. 
just what you what you see in everyday life um social media can affect everybody in 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 different ways Mm -hmm. it may it may look the same i feel i feel like it's like for everything like like everything affects people in different ways It's, it's about whether whether you you have the the capacity to to kind of moderate yourself on mm-hmm. those things and be be able to get off of it when when you need to get off of yeah, it, yeah, um, and not be addicted. And yeah. I think it's shown that like every, every, a lot of people have a, have addiction problems. Yeah, and in reality, it's like one of, one of the things that I I think about when I think about uh, social media is uh, it's 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 run by people, but it's in it's a, it's an object that we choose to be on. Yeah, it's 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 free, so anyone can get a hold of it and any part of the world. So um, when we blame something like like, um, not that this is where this conversation is going, but when I've heard that people blame social media for all of the problems, all of the mental health issues, or at least a lot of the, them that come from like uh, from teenagers or, or young adults and things like that, um, it's kind of like putting the blame on something that's inanimate. No, yeah, yeah, th- yeah. this is something that uh, I, I've, I've used. I've used this example this before. It's kind of like a lot of people have like this, uh, this, this a uh, laundry chair. I don't know if if you've ever had something like that or like a laundry desk where when you take off your dirty clothes, they end up on that table, mm-hmm. on that chair, or on you know whatever. Yeah, it, it, it piles up on, and then so we just keep taking it off and putting it on there, taking it off and putting it on there. And then at one day we get fed up that we don't have our laundry where it's supposed to be. So the the logical thing would be to just start putting putting it where it's supposed to be, yeah. <laughs> right? Not I'm going to take away that chair or I'm going to take away that that table because yeah. it's because because what's going to happen once you take it away, where is the laundry going to go? It's going to go somewhere else. It's going to go on the bed. That's it's going to go on the floor. It's you can't just remove something when in reality the problem is something that you're doing Mm. so uh, with social media a lot of people say oh it's social media it's social media but in reality do you think it's it's the actual people like it's the people themselves not like not seeing the like their own issues it 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 can be yes yes i because in 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 a lot i feel that when they see young people and they see for example all the kids on their phones like what is it that's making them be on their phones? Why are they on their phones so much? Why are they on their phones in the house instead of talking to their parents? Is there an issue there with their parents? Is there something that, that they, they don't want to be present with in the household or with their with the people that they consider their friends, right? Mm-hmm. They don't want to be present. They don't know how to interact. And people say, well, it's social media that's making them like that. Well, no, there's something they're using social media as an exit, as an outlet, as even an escapism, just mm-hmm. like alcohol is just like just like collecting something excessively is just yeah. like anything th- th- they're just using it but so, do, do you also like i, I know there there's also been uh, studies about how like when a notification pops up mm-hmm. it's it's a trigger of dopamine in your yes. brain yes. and then it, that's like the, an addictive tendency and it, ca- it causes people to just want to keep coming back and checking yes. on it and it's not like I, i'll i'll end up I know that I'll I'll end up doing this where where I'll look at my phone to see if anything has popped up and I and then I put it down and then like a minute later I'll check it again yeah and yeah. we'll just keep like I'll, I'll do that because it's like oh like nothing's popped up but I'll look at my phone just for a second to see if anything pops up and then I'll close it out you close it up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and I've I've seen that and in reality I've experienced that too mm-hmm. I I have that that issue where I also want to pick it up in in reality and. And see if anything's texted me or yeah, I got anything's changed or, anything. or yeah, if I've yeah. gotten anything. And cryptos are on the rise. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So in reality, it it really that really can be boiled down to uh, how we have been already wired to feel mm-hmm. that way. Just like uh, when someone that is um, addicted to something, they might not have it in their mind in at, at the moment. But as soon as they hear it or they know about it or they get a craving or something kind of, you know, if they have if they've been off that thing, they they are, they might want to start craving it if they haven't had a long time off of the the drug or the alcohol or whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, so they they want to they want to crave it. They, they'll crave it or, or or they they will they will seek it or they will have to fight it. 
Mm. So in reality, when we find ourselves in these situations where we get like these notifications or we get, you know, the ring or anything like that, we will, we will automatically go to the phone because that's what we've done every single day since we've had a phone. Yeah. Like yeah. how long have we had a phone in our own possession? Some people, a few years, some people, their whole life. Now, if they've, they've now it's phone. been, it's been their whole lives. Exactly. So yeah. it's, it's already been, it's already a part of their routine. It's, it's already a part of entire society. So taking it away, that, we've already we've opened pandora's box yes exactly yeah. so yeah. in reality you what instead of trying again trying to take away that chair instead of trying to take away the phone instead of trying to take away the the internet which is impossible because eventually either they're going to get their phone back or they're going to get the internet back it's you cannot escape it yeah it's trying to deal with the problems that they might be having that's making them run to the phone that's making them run to the internet for 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 some gratification that's making them run to these places for the dopamine where they can't get it anywhere else Mm. maybe they can't get it at home maybe they can't get it in their relationships maybe they can't get it in these different uh, circumstances that maybe other people can maybe other people are just perfectly fine going on a hike talking to their you know their family talking to their friends but these people aren't so now we have to so so it's not the issue oh it's the phones it's the internet it's this it's 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 what's going on with them Okay. And when, when, which is why it's such a hard because uh, uh, everyone else is different everyone is like it's because it's not the same thing with everyone else yeah yes in reality if we can try and control it if we can try and put timers if we can try and and you know get away from it again just like the same thing with 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 mental health it all starts with the person the yeah. person wants to has to want to seek that help the person the person has to want to leave the phone leave those things so they can try and pursue things maybe even seek uh, uh, um, uh, a professional help yeah. but um, uh, it's it's a little I guess it, I would have to say it's a little bit of both it would be the proactiveness of trying to limit yourself but also not putting all the blame on those things because again those things the phone doesn't have its own mind the person that picked it up is the one that has the mind that needs the help hmm. and and things like that so um, in reality man I love having your cat here he's, he's, <laughs> I love having <laughs> <laughs> I, apparently she really really likes you she she's never like this with other people <laughs> i i i love having and petting her it makes me it calls me down so much i am not gonna lie yeah she she and she's so she likes it and she's so, fluffy, so. <laughs> anyways but yeah. yeah yeah that um that that's the way that i i i would think but in reality again it's such a deep question there's so mm. many crevices and and things like there's that. like so many nuances to, yeah, to, to it yeah, yeah because it's not just that could be an entire podcast episode in itself. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Very. Very much so. Um, so, on the, on the topic of social media itself, uh, you're a social media marketer. I am an entrepreneur, uh, like with my own business, with the podcast and like stories and all that stuff. But personally, I suck at marketing on social media because mm-hmm. I I feel like I don't have enough just enough content to be putting out there on social media on a daily basis on that, on that schedule that ever uh, there's a specific schedule that you're supposed to be on for not just Instagram, but like Instagram, Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter. And like, there's like, there's all these different like algorithms that you need to meet in order, in order to get more likes and more follows and all that stuff. Um, Get more people to see your content so that you can actually, you know, start selling and, and, and get, and get a following. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, what are some ways that we could that that you could kind of skirt around that issue of of not having enough enough to post? I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I think getting away from needing to have everything perfect. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's it's a good place to start. Okay. Um, uh, especially for the people that might not have the income. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you, if obviously if you have the income, you can just hire people. Yeah. That's the yeah, easiest yeah. way. But if you don't have the income, that means instead of, uh, you needing to have the best camera, you needing to have the best equipment. Um, that's something that, that can definitely help you instead of just needing, waiting until you have those things. In reality, I think that's, that's the point waiting until you have those things, not because you know you, you can't upgrade and, and as you save up you can get your your better equipment to make the quality of everything yeah. better but not waiting until you have it just using what you have at your disposal now yeah using your phone just taking out your phone 
and and just shooting on on, on your iPhone or shooting on on like what I had before my BlackBerry and stuff like that. So <laughs> it, it, it didn't. It doesn't really matter. It, it what it is is that you have to start. Uh, uh, and I'm talking to everybody when I say you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to start uh, uh, just doing, just definitely doing. Which is it's like, like it's like when you start a podcast. Like I, I, like I tell people who want to start a podcast, literally just do it, just do it. Because mm-hmm. I wanted to start a podcast for like two years before I even started this podcast, and I kept saying like, oh, when I get my own, like my stuff, like. Well, I, I need to get some stuff together and all that stuff. Like, no, you just do it. You once yeah. you start it, then then you start it, and yeah, it's gonna suck at the, at at first, but eventually, the the more you stay consistent with it, the better it gets. Exactly. I, I feel like a lot of people are afraid that because it's going to, it's not gonna be up to par to the to their own quality, mm-hmm. um, that other people are going to judge it. And they're yeah. gonna feel bad because yeah. people are gonna judge it. Well, and we're always gonna have people who are gonna ju- judge. No matter stuff. what, kind, yeah. no matter high high quality, we will have our equipment or high high quality. We will have our content. People are always going to judge, mm-hmm. always. And yeah. I know you. At most possibly, you've experienced it already, yeah, and you, I have. you will continue <laughs> to experience it. And 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 um, so when when it comes to creating more content, that means going out to different outlets not just audio but maybe uh animation or maybe uh video video yeah uh, i i think video is one of my favorite things that to go to because uh you can like record the podcast yeah and, and you can use that video clip to you know make make into smaller clips and put it onto tiktok and put it onto instagram and and you know put the long long form onto youtube and i haven't gotten into tiktok yet like you definitely should because yeah right now right now is definitely the time okay there's two you t- if if you, I know YouTube would be good. Yeah. So the um, TikTok is the place where you can get a lot of people quickly. Okay. Okay. It 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 is definitely the place where a lot of people wanted to be when like uh, YouTube was growing up and and Instagram was was growing up. And yeah. Facebook was growing up and um a lot of people are like trying to be popular in those in those places now and it's very very hard oh, okay yeah and yeah yeah because because so, youtube has all, all these re- uh, regulations now exactly. in, in it and but it, but if you started in the beginning then your, your, your account is most possibly bigger you, if you look at the people that have been making content since forever those are the ones that are like the heavy hitters in in, yeah. in, in those platforms that's exactly yeah. what tiktok is right now it's the beginning it's only been out for a few years it's growing really fast especially with with the pandemic it just shot up like crazy yeah so it is getting it's i'm not gonna say it's getting harder but it will get harder if, and, it, if and, it continues to be uh relevant and also i feel like like i i notice that youtube is also also doing like like short like little reels yes. Yes. and like all like the all the different social medias are, are basically taking tiktok and putting like tiktok yes. videos in, into their whole thing it happens every time yeah it happens every yeah. time instagram does it all the time they tried to do it with, with uh with like Snapchat. They tried to take over Snapchat yeah. by doing the uh the small videos that you mm-hmm. you, you could watch. They and then basically Snapchat went down and then they kind of went back up again. So it's you know everyone tries to take this. They think you know it's the, it's the magic recipe because it's what people want. They want to see either smart reels or sometimes at certain times of the of the year they want to see long videos. You know yeah. it, it'll change depending on the demographic, obviously. Mm-hmm. But um, when it comes, like I was saying, when it comes to content, you can get a video and you can, you know, since you already have all the audio stuff, you can just, you know, put it together, sit mm-hmm. it together and you can make small 30 second uh, clips out of your, your big long. So imagine you, you sit down and you make like one long two hour uh, or one hour uh, podcast yeah. with video. And then out of that, you, you just make little tiny clips. And yeah, depending on the topics that you've already talked about, mm-hmm. you you have those. And then depending on when you put it out, um, depending if people what what uh, people liked the most, you can uh, make a podcast based off of that. Because mm. now now you already have a, a kind of a direction to go to. Because now yeah. you say, oh, most people liked talking about this specific subject in this two hour podcast. So that's kind of how you can use it. Yeah, to you find engage. You find the the like, little niche that you that you get into exactly. And like, yeah. and, and and something good about it about like like you not really editing too much, getting the bloopers and stuff like that. It, it, that also can go up on. Yeah, people like to see the behind the scenes. They want to see how you done how you done everything, and also. Um, when it comes to content, talking about you, how you've gotten here, 
how maybe how long you've done this being more personal exactly exactly and and i know a lot of when i when i say this to a lot of people everyone's saying well there's so many videos of people doing that but it's not yeah. about it, it's not about how many videos there are of, of of people doing it it's about people getting to know you better mm-hmm. people getting to getting getting personal with you because that's what you want you want to create this uh this this um this relationship with your listeners or the people that watch your videos and they can't get personal with you if they don't know who you are where you came from how you got here that's kind of like how twitch operates because like twitch is all, all about like yes. the community within yes. the within the chat and yes. everyone kind of can can communicate with the actual twitch streamer exactly and all that exactly stuff. you want people to get to see your setup and what your setup was before this you want people to see maui and and the, how 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 she you know <laughs> loves to be and you know near us and stuff like that that that's what people want they want to see you they want to see this obviously they want to hear what you want to say because if not they want it they want to be there yeah but once they get to see who you really are then that's when the connection from just you're someone that I listen to to oh that's Matt that's Matt yeah yeah oh I'm gonna listen to Matt you know I'm gonna listen to this because you know I have a connection with him he said something one day or he had a, a listener one day and he said to what that listener that I was thinking exactly that so mm-hmm. that's exactly what you know how you can create more content and um it's not easy for everyone because not everyone is like you know, video savvy, I guess, you know, yeah, that, that's, phone and also the ed- editing. Yeah. That, that's the... kind of the thing that kind of holds people back. But yeah. just like when you started with podcasts, it's going to be a struggle mm-hmm. and, and reaching out for help. I mean, talking now about this, I will, I will help you any way I can. Okay. And yeah. if you want, and actually, you know, I have some ideas of things that, that I, I want to cool. be able to record with you. That'd be very cool. Even like, um, taking the, the, taking this podcast onto a bench outside somewhere yeah. where there's people around, and and maybe having people weigh in if they want to and things like that and you know it, it, that, that'd be cool. I, I kind of want to. That would be actually really cool to yeah. go go around and maybe go to like a movie theater and mm-hmm. be like be like. So what kind of movie are you seeing today? Yeah. Um. What are you? What are your thoughts on on the movie industry right now? And do you think there are any good movies out that are actually like yeah, yeah, like come, exactly. Like, yeah. Any anything? I, I I suggest anything you. This this also has to do with your content and your followers. It's important that you stick to things. You don't have to, but you. It's important that you stick to things that you that you like. Yeah, that you already enjoy. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, the more you like it, the more you will be passionate about it, and the more you people will see it. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you have to. You have to stick to that all the time. Um, but it's it's better for you to try and and hover around those things more more than anything. Yeah, and um, if you you know, so it, like I said, if. You're ever 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 um, willing to do something like that? I I will charge up my camera, dude. I have so I, I have so out. many things that I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, we got to do it. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll definitely do it. We'll we'll, we'll, do it. we'll plan it out. I mean, we we'll, yeah. we we work together, so we we'll, we'll plan it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and now and now you know where I live. So <laughs> exactly, I'll be at your house. Like, hey, we got we got to record something. Come on, let's get the camera out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I am totally down, and like. Uh, have you ever thought about starting a podcast? I have actually. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting that I I do what I do. Uh, at least, at least, or well, I guess I should say I did what I did. You know, because I haven't done social media marketing in since the pandemic. Yeah. Um, only- I do. I feel like you, you'd be great at it. Like just you you already have like a lot of like a lot of charisma and and just Thank being you. able to just communicate. Uh, it's the cat. Thoroughly, That's what it, is. it is the cat. <laughs> <laughs> well you can have your own cat on the podcast That's too I'll just, I'll just bring my cat yeah. <laughs> but yeah um it, it, yeah i i have thought about it and it, like i said it's interesting that me doing social media marketing i don't have platforms i don't have anything for myself and it's mostly because i like to to be behind the scenes of you like to help, help others other, yeah other exactly I well like i mean I, I i do need someone <laughs> behind the scene well you know what i i have seriously been thinking about it this past couple of days mm-hmm. and especially since you asked me to be on the podcast and i was i was talking to 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 my family members and i was telling them you know what i think i want to I want to be. I want to get back into it, and I think this would be a really good jump start for me to be able to get back into it and actually have uh, a platform and actually have. Uh, That'd different. be awesome. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, I mean, I guess I could just use the the knowledge that I already have for myself, but also be able to use it to help other people. Yeah. Grow, and I know there are, like I said, a ton of other people that already do it. Yeah, you, you and know. you can do like a, you could start like a whole like social media marketing company that that like, then can also. 
you can get like sponsorships and and do donations for yeah. like me- mental that's, health that's and all exactly that stuff. That's exactly what I want to do. Yeah. That's exactly what I want to do. And and it's been this something that I because it's interesting the way I started doing into social media marketing. Just going back a little bit, mm-hmm. um, I was just a behavioral therapist, and I was a well, actually, I should say just, but you know, because I was doing a lot for for the community. Yeah, and I felt it was very fulfilling. But uh, I was also like a, a, a Lyft driver because you can only do part time as a, as a behavioral therapist. Yeah, yeah, because it's after school hours and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And um, so I I felt like um, there was a point in my life that I I was I felt like I could do more for the for the mental health industry, mental health community. I, yeah. I should say not the industry, but the community. Um, and I felt that I could help people because it was such so gratifying to help these people and help these families and help these individuals. It was, it's one of the most amazing feeling, you know, looking back a year and seeing how much these people have progressed and not just the client or the, or the patient or the person that you're working with, uh, be thankful, but also the family members. Yeah. And I remember I, I, I worked like, for example, I worked with this one family that the family, the, the, he, it was interesting because he was one of the most, um, stubborn, fathers that i have ever i have ever i had ever worked with at that point hmm. and he didn't believe that that his son had autism and wow. uh so he just he just did not want to believe he just didn't want to believe it and but once he told me this and i don't even, I don't even know this because he, he opened up to me and it's very interesting because he's he was he's like a he's bald and he has a mustache and he has like this like this big like gangster look oh, okay like, yeah like, he's yeah. just buff and you know he was just like he did, he's a man of like only just a few words and mm-hmm. he's a very successful man he had, he had his own business but he was just like that you know very hard and stuff like that and then once he just came up to me this was like maybe i want to say 10 or 11 months into giving therapy he was like i just want to tell you it was I, I i i didn't believe that he was he had autism i didn't even believe that autism existed but until the moment that I saw you interact with him and the way he acted with you and the way he changed, not just in the months, but in that moment, how he completely changed and how you were able to help him with the way you did things or the way you, you had to stop doing things. It, I, I just knew it just, it just clicked in my head. I just, this, it was like completely night and day from the way he reacted with you. than the way he reacted with everyone else at the moment, mm. he was nonverbal. It, and, and so it he was very he was very violent and and so with me he wasn't and, and uh, he, uh, little by little i started to help him so he started to to talk and and, and say words little, little things here and there yeah i started to teach him a few signs signs for sign language in, in the beginning and then from there he went to to speaking and saying things and and within just a few months he was talking and you couldn't get him to stop talking nice and, and he was i want to say he was he was like eight. Oh. So his whole life, he just, he was so violent because he couldn't express himself. Oh. He, he, no one understood him. Mm-hmm. So that's why he would bite people. And that's why he would kick and punch and, and his little sister, oh, but his little sister, she's, she was so cute, but she, she was, she was always afraid of him and she, but she loved him. Yeah. She loved him so much, but she, but she didn't want to get hit. She didn't want to get punched or anything. And that's, that was their life. And they were always mad at him because of that. And, and, and so when I stepped and in. And that also it, causes him to kind of reel ex- back. Because exactly. And not just that, even become more violent because he felt so misunderstood. Yeah. But once we sat down and we started doing the therapy and he started to change, just there was so much peace in the house. That's was, good. And, and and all you could hear instead of the crying of the sister was the laughter because they were playing and and he was talking and he wanted to see this and when he would tell him no he wouldn't throw a tantrum he would he would be like the most best behaved kid out of a, a, anyone and, and it was so interesting to see the dad change because he didn't since I didn't know he was he was very stubborn and like that but I felt it from the very beginning yeah, yeah. And there was that 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 force that it was like did, a tension yeah it was that, exactly it was that tension. And, and, but later I could feel him unraveling without him telling me the same thing as when I was a kid. I could tell how people feel without them telling me. I mm-hmm. could feel it with him too. The mom, she was always on board because yeah. she was the one that was there all the time. So she kind of had more insight and she was very open. She listened to everything, everything we suggested she would do. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's one big, huge thing that, why, why that, he progressed so fast yeah. because of the parents and because the dad was so got on board and he started to do things better as well. That's good. And, and, uh, and getting to the conclusion of the story was that at that moment when he was telling me this, it was like, I was so grateful that you did this for my family and for my son. That must that have felt amazing. It was the best. It was one of, it was the, 
basically the reason why I did it. Yeah. Like the reason why I, I kept doing it. Mm-hmm. And and I didn't want to stop. And it's interesting that he they had like this um the not not getting off topic too much, but he had like this nice little BMW 2002 BMW that I, I always loved. I would always tell him, man, this is such a nice car. It's nice. <laughs> at the time, you know, you don't really get paid much as a, as a therapist. Yeah. So I was driving like this little beat up old, uh, um, I think it was a Corolla at the time. Oh, yeah. It was like an 80s Corolla and it was all beat up. But I would always show up in like a suit and, and like a tie and, and, and I didn't mind getting on the ground and killing with the kids like that, you know. Yes. And um, so um, he was just like, you know what? I want people to respect you. Uh, from the moment that they see you coming down the street. And I was like, okay, what does that supposed to mean? <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> but let's see where this is going. And he's like, yeah, so I want to give you my car. And I was like, wow. I was like, wait, well, what do you mean? He's like, yes, I, I, I know you like the BMW and I want to give it to you. And, wow. And I was just in shock. And I was like, <laughs> like okay, um, Okay, no, no. Let's take a step back. <laughs> I, I can't just take. A, first of all, <laughs> I'm the therapist. <laughs> yes, I, I can't. Just I'm take the one some, that. <laughs> I can't just. You, you hired me. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, so I, I can't just. Uh, uh, I, I feel like this is wrong in so many levels. I can't just accept it. Like I can't. Yeah, this is not going to happen. Dang. Like, and he just insisted and insisted and insisted every single time that I went for therapy. Every single that's time a blessing that he just wanted me to have. He just wanted me. To, and then the mom was like, "You should just take it." You should just take it. He really, really wants to give it to you. And it was so nice. He had like, oh these, my rim, he had like these rims and stuff. And he had a sound system. And I was I loved I really did like that car. God, dude, I would have cried. And and, and <laughs> uh, there was a during that time, it was a moment when I was gonna be switching to other agencies. Mm-hmm. So I actually was leaving. And when he found when they found out, he was just like, Okay, fine. I'll sell it to you. Five hundred bucks. <laughs> did you buy it? I ended up buying it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> dude <laughs> that's awesome and and it just because i was leaving and he just he just the way he told me that he wanted me to have it was just so sincere and i mean obviously i did want the car but i didn't want it just just to just to take it i yeah. felt like i was going to be taking advantage of them and he just knew like you know i know you don't have an, like a lot of money i know you don't you're not you're not you're not rolling in the benjamins and stuff like that and but I want you to have it. Like there is no reason for this car to be here. I'm married. I have a family. This is a, a, a single person's car. You can have it. I want to give it to you. You take it, and I want you to take. And so I wow, up, it was just so much. I just I ended up taking. It. Obviously, I I, I love the car and it lasted me a while. And I was driving around. That's that, but that's um, awesome. it was just the sheer emotion and a, of appreciation, not just from that family, but from many others. Even though they you know they didn't give me cars or anything like yeah, that, but yeah. it, I wasn't expecting to get that. You know, it mm-hmm. was just. It was just the work that I did and how appreciated these appreciative these families were was the reason why I I I wanted to continue this. Mm-hmm. But not just doing behavioral therapy, but going into social media marketing so I could help get more programs to bring to, to light fund to, fund pe- like exactly. people and like so I can help people, yeah. you know, get that help because I just felt at the end I think it was that moment when I realized, you know what, I wanna do this on a bigger scale. Mm-hmm. Like it was great to feel it from an individual, but I want to be able to help 10, 20, 30 families at a time. Yeah. And, and that's kind of how I started getting into social started, media. Sort a huge program. And yeah. Yeah. And I saw, that's kind of how I got into social media marketing and I started doing it for like different coffee shops and yeah. influencers, you know, everything. And then, um, right before, uh, pen, the pandemic, I got a hold of some doctors and that's cause that's why that's, the, that's the area I wanted to go to was was uh was was the medical field yeah specifically mental health and i was like if i can get into the into the medical field and do it with doctors then i'll get the feel of it and i'll get more connections and i'll be able to get into the mental health and i was just about to sign a contract when the when covid and the lockdown happened and everything was paused and then from there canceled yeah and it was it was so devastating to feel that i was so close i was right there and that was gonna be what i was gonna do and i was gonna be and it and i'm not gonna lie i think i am part of the statistics of of the of the lockdown and the pandemic that it has it has affected me emotionally and mentally yeah yeah yeah. And, and and i do i know that i do need to seek help and i need to go to therapy myself uh because there's just some resentment but to nobody, like there's no, like who am yeah, I? Gonna, it's, like, it's, yeah, who it's, am I? I can't hold anybody accountable. You yeah. know, it's just, it's just like the bigger things. Like, mm-hmm. uh, cause I, I know like for, for me, 
I, to be honest, the at the start of uh, at the start of the lockdowns, I was I was not doing so well because mm-hmm. I ended up making more than double the amount that I was making before when I was working. Oh wow! And so I was, but I was sitting at home basically, wow, doing nothing. Yeah, and that kind of started getting to my head a lot yeah, and, yeah, it, yeah. and it bugged the crap out of me. Mm. And then finally, and then finally I kind of, I kind of kicked myself into gear and I started working on my, on my game mm-hmm. and that, and then also my podcast. That's when I, I, I started my podcast last year in August. Yeah. And that's when I, I realized, like, Oh crap, dude, I, I can get like, I can get my head into this thing. But then when I, when I got, uh, when, when I, got the job at chick-fil-a we, yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. uh i ended up getting distracted because like, w- like as soon as something else comes into my life i i lose of course my f- you only have so much space yeah. to, to dedicate to stuff yeah yeah and like it it's crazy like we we i feel like the the lockdown it affected everyone mm-hmm. differently yeah. obviously oh, yeah. but i know that i know that everyone was affected by it and it caused a lot of a lot of depression and and, and a lot of For sure a, a lot of issues but also i feel like it was a time for us to wake up and look ourselves in the mirror yeah uh some people didn't like what they saw mm-hmm. and some people realized that they need to become better yeah and i think that's like that that's something that we all need to do yeah we all exactly. need to just start really Taking it one step at a time each yeah. day and look, stop comparing ourselves to other people and yeah. start comparing ourselves to who we were yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And then become better yeah, every exactly. day at a, at a time. Not wait for a pandemic to tell us that we can do it anytime. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, obviously it's easier to say than to do it, but it, I mean, yeah, you're it right. Is. It you're is. Right. Yeah. It, 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 it's just something we, we all need to do. And, and, um, it, even, a lot of people think, well, you know what? I, I don't need to. I, I'm not like the people that, you know, have mental health issues or that their life is in shambles. But even if you if you feel everything is great, it's it's good to take a step back, you know, see the you know use use everything in your line of sight in life and see if every if there's anything else you can you can work on. Yeah, you know, even if it's something small, and that that's something that helps you to better yourself every every single year every single month every single day yeah and if, if you're if you're already feeling great and doing great that's great that's great that's not that's not a lot of people so that's you're, that those people are very fortunate but you can still you know do more do more to 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 help yourself, help those help those yourself. closer to you because you one, once you help those closer to you they will also return that that help and yeah and even if they don't because i think i feel like a lot of people I mean, not maybe not in that in that sense exactly. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people feel that they need to be compensated in some way, yeah, for it, for, for doing good for someone else, or they they feel like they car- they, they have like a, a expectations. Karma that, happens when you don't have expectations for something, like with you, like with with your story. Like you you didn't have any expectations of them doing like giving you a car or anything like that you you were doing that because well you enjoyed helping people and like pro- 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 like helping helping people progress through 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 their issues and their and their mental their their mental mental issues and karma will like i i don't necessarily i i think that the universe balances itself out mm-hmm. and, and like if if you put out good like po- positive vibes throughout like through your own surrounding reality then then positivity will start kind of flowing in with you and then so what well, I mean, some every now and then life will life will hit the fan, and you you start kind of going down, and it, it, it's a roller coaster. Whoops, like that, right? Yeah, yeah like like that. Exactly. That that's the roller coaster. Exactly. <laughs> Hitting mics and stuff. Hitting mics, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like well, you you can like I, I'll I'll be going down down, but then as soon as I I realize the problem and I and I start addressing it, mm-hmm. and then then it, it starts to go back up. Yeah, and you know you just need to. Notice the problem before it's too late, before you hit rock bottom. But once you hit rock bottom, there's there's no place but to go up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. 
and and it's really important to be able to do things like that way without any expectation mm-hmm. and and to do things just to just to help people yeah and um because once we do things with expectation especially if you're going to be doing something like like a podcast or anything uh, on, that has to do with online social media if you have a business you obviously business owners know that there's no expectation that they they have to do things without expectation because yeah. they can't just put a product out there and think that everyone's going to buy it yeah they like th- thinking that they they deserve people to buy their their product they deserve that people need to be listening to their stuff they need to be commenting on their stuff they they, they don't it's it's like no one owes you anything mm-hmm. no no especially people that know nothing about you have never heard of you yeah how are they going to give you anything like you, can, you so you have to do things because you want to do them yeah you 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 start a podcast because you want to start a podcast you 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 start a, a business because you want you have something behind the you have an idea you to, yeah exactly that like, you want to convey to other people and you're not doing it like yeah the goal would be to make money from it yeah. but the the start of it should never be i need to make money the start of it should be this is something that i want to do like to help others or yeah. or give people something to to enjoy Exactly. Like for for example, my my stuff, I I want people to be immersed into the universe that I've been creating for so long, like mm-hmm. basically my entire life, mm-hmm. and I also want to inspire other creators to come and join me in this endeavor and and help them kind of grow as well. And I mean, I'm growing through it too, and 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 collaborating with others to yeah. to grow together that that sounds like fun yeah, yeah. of course of course yeah. and you know what there are people that want to do it for money you know what they can do yeah they, they can if, do that if, if they think that's going to bring them happiness then they will do what, yeah. what they think you know but in reality we know what we what will make us happy mm-hmm. and everyone has their own thing and uh we should definitely do those things um uh definitely do them what like i like i mentioned without any expectations you know completely full of uh, uh, love of love exactly. passion exactly there you yeah. go yeah I, I think that's a good place to end this podcast yeah <laughs> well, all right thank you um I, I, I know you don't have any like specific places like for social media yet but we'll, we'll you'll be getting some yeah I, I would really much really really like to have you on again yeah because then like it, maybe we can have you on uh, as well as like another guest and then we can like have a full like oh, that would d- be amazing. discussion yeah, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, I, I am planning on, I, I, I want to, I now I know we were going to end it, but honestly, I just want to say thank you, yeah. Matt, Matt, because in reality, this might've been the push that I needed to, to kind of get everything jump started again and, and kind of focus on the things that I want to, that I, that I really wanted to, yeah. you know, a year and a half ago where I was at the peak of everything. And, um, and, uh, so I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you that you give me this, basically this opportunity to be able to get, keep these things in mind and, and, and start up. And yeah, that's the goal to have, uh, some social media platforms. Hopefully maybe when this already comes out, I will have some, so yeah. you can just add them, but, uh, I will be working on them. And I will let you know. And I, I am always, I will always be willing to join you again. Yeah. If, if there's more people, it, well, it'd be the more fun. I, I'm actually planning on doing a live stream next year. Oh, cool. Um, I want to do that on like YouTube and like and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be for my game. So oh. may, maybe you can help me with that. Yes. Um, yes. I, I'm down. That is, Count that, that is some stuff that like, there's a lot of plans I have in the future, but, but yeah, it, it's my pleasure to have you on. And I really like, I really enjoyed this conversation. I think, I think like people need to need to hear about these, these conversations and, mm-hmm. and uh, really like just, you know, put some good vibes out into the world. Yeah. And thank you for, for doing that too. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I thank you for listening to our conversation. If you'd like to hear more guest entries like this one, go over and become a free member at our theanianthologies.com to not miss another episode like this. And if you're interested in becoming a guest yourself, you can fill out an entry form at the site's homepage. Until next time, travelers. Be safe. Stay safe. And if death comes to you, may you be reborn in power. <laughs>